Hey, this is Jody with WeldingTipsAndTricks.com. I've got to do revision one to this little modification I did that a lot of people said I shouldn't do, but I did it anyway. The girl just wants the seat to feel like the spin bike she uses at the gym. That's all she wants, so I'm doing it. But it didn't make for much of a video, so I thought I'd throw in some random tips. So here's the first tip, and that is find a way to get steady. Find a place to prop. That is probably one of the, one of the key things. Now you can see what I'm using here. It's a product I, that I sell called a TIG finger, and it slides right on up the joint. But whether you whether you decide to get a TIG finger or not, you still got to figure out a way to prop and be steady. So whether you're going whether or not you're gonna uh, clamp some uh, a C clamp and rest your forearm on it, or put a ball of tape on your finger, or cut a thumb out of an old stick welding glove, it, no matter what, you got to figure out a way to get steady. Or you're gonna be in that electrode all the time. You're gonna be wobbling around with your torch, and it's just not good. Okay, another, another tip is for horizontal welds, you're going to need to point the electrode upward a little bit. The force of the arc will push the, will push the puddle upward a little bit, and if you, it really doesn't have much of an effect when you push it upward, but if you, if you push the electrode down, if you angle it down, it will have an effect. If you're going to have undercut on a horizontal joint like this, it's going to be at the top, and it's usually not so much undercut technically as it is underfill, but, uh, you know, that's splitting hairs. If you just point it upward a little bit and add wire, add your filler wire into the top, sort of the top portion of the puddle, that'll that'll keep everything going like it needs to go. Keeps the top of the puddle kind of chilled a little bit. If you add enough wire and satisfy the puddle, you should be in good shape as long as you your angle isn't way out of whack. Now you know aluminum doesn't change color when it gets hot. I thought it's inter interesting watching the puddle form on the back side right there. All right, another tip is a good all-around setting for inverters is 120 hertz and 65 percent EN on the AC balance. I'm doing an outside corner joint here using a setting very similar to that. Some people like to drift it on up to 70 or maybe 75 on the uh, AC balance but I'd rather have a clean puddle than a pinpointed arc a lot of times. Another tip is when you need to weld really thick aluminum setting a low frequency of about 50 hertz you'll get more heat out of your machine that way. I did this a while back one inch thick aluminum. I did use an argon helium mix and I set it down to about 50 hertz. Made a lot of difference. So here we go on that. Didn't even, didn't even have to preheat it to, in order to get it to puddle pretty quickly. That's something that, that kind of is counterintuitive. You would think that, that setting that frequency up and being able to really uh, pinpoint the arc really focus the arc would put more heat in but it really doesn't. Lowering the frequency actually does and uh, it's surprising the difference. If you're, if you're kind of borderline on like a 200 amp machine and you barely have enough amps, um, a little helium mixed in with the argon as well as setting a low frequency, low meaning below 60. 60 is what you're going to be accustomed to if you're using a regular conventional transformer machine, but even dropping it lower to 50 helps. And then also another tip is a sharp electrode with a frequency set as high as say 200 hertz can help when you want a narrow bead. This is just 11 gauge, uh, eighth inch or three millimeter thick metal here and using a sharpened electrode trying to just not have it any more than the thickness of the metal, one eighth wide bead works pretty good. Now you may have noticed the technique I was using there that I was lengthening the arc when I was adding rod and I'll do the same thing here on this butt joint and actually to me this is logical because you, you pinpoint the heat, you, you have a, a nice tight arc when that filler wire isn't apt to get in there and then right before you add the filler wire if you lengthen the arc you won't be in you won't accidentally stick that filler wire into the electrode and also sometimes the puddle height grows into the electrode another tip is a low frequency uh, pulse setting of like less than one pulse per second like 0.7 will give you time to get in position a little bit better you don't feel locked into one pulse per second you can go even lower now I've got a miscut thing here just for a little uh, example of a video I did a long time ago. And it's got quite a gap in it and I'm using a, a really low pulse frequency and what it does you can watch that puddle almost solidify as it backs off. And then I gotta get the rod in there really quick on the front of the puddle but it, it really works well in making a decent looking weld even when you're filling in a pretty good size gap like this. Now I'm using kind of a rounded bald electrode Probably the AC balance is somewhere around 60 here because sometimes when you have a gap, 
you will inadvertently pull just a little bit of air in there and a little bit of extra cleaning action goes a long way. Another tip that, that is pretty obvious, but hey, if you, if you haven't done it before, you need to know this. Welding aluminum without any filler wire uh, hardly ever works. Aluminum is just hot short. It's, it's weak when it's hot, and all those contractile and shrinkage stresses while the outside metal is uh, resisting and expanding, this causes problems. See that crack open up right in the middle of the weld? Pretty typical. All right, now that's enough of those tips. Now we'll go on with the video, which I didn't think was enough of a video to make a whole video out of, so I threw in that other stuff. This is where I, the, this is my first stab at it. It looked like it might be a little off, but you got to start somewhere. And then I had the girl, uh, you know, do a fitting and and uh, you know get on it, and 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 she needed it a little bit lower and a little, and the and the seat tilted down a little bit. So first thing I did is I, in a bandsaw, the little portable bandsaw stand, cut that. Cut that small piece of seat tube off, and then now I need to drill a hole with a hole saw, but this hole's off center. So the easiest thing to do to get a center punch mark and get a hole in the center is to go ahead and fill this hole in. Now that my cup is kind of, the TIG cup is kind of blocking the view of the filler wire adding in there, but I'm just basically using minimal heat, getting the bead around it, and then just going around and washing around as I dab and dab and dab until it fills in. And then when it fills in, I'll let it soak just a minute and fill in just a little bit more. And then gradually taper off and wiggle the electrode around and let it solidify so I don't leave a little crater, a crater crack or a big deep dimple. And then after I drilled the hole out, I'm just going to take the easy, the easy lazy way out and flip this thing over and then I welded it like that. Arc shots didn't come out good enough to show you on that, so we'll just we'll just move to the next thing. And then it needed to be tilted down as well. So what I did is I cut a kind of a pie wedge out of the out of the uh, the bracing out of those gussets. I cut a pie wedge out and then bent bent it, and that that left me with a gap on one side. So I've got to get a tack weld here. And tacking with a gap on aluminum sometimes goes kind of like this. You you dab dab to one corner and then you move over to the other corner. You dab and then you kind of like grow them together until they finally join. And here's the other side, same thing. This one side or another usually will work better than the other. I didn't run into too much trouble here, but sometimes you will, you'll draw air in and you just kind of stop for a minute and reposition with a different angle. All right, we're going to go ahead and weld this without pulse or anything. You can see it kind of closed up a little bit already just with those two tacks on it, but I'm using that technique. I'm lengthening the arc just a little bit while I add wire, and I'm getting back over the puddle too so that I don't... Uh, you know, keyhole out too much and, and, and blow a hole in it, but it's thick, it's thick enough to not worry about blowing a hole in too much. And by the time I get to the end there, it is running like water, like aluminum does. It heated up, saturated with heat so much, and so I just uh, backed off slowly with the foot pedal. And here's the other side, and here's where that tack and I was talking about, it's getting contaminated and kind of mushrooming on me here, and the best thing to do is just stop. Don't try to drive ahead and drive it with heat, stop and come at it from a different angle that's more favorable that won't be drawing air so much into the into the weld metal. And it usually will clean up if you've got enough cleaning action without having to go in and, and uh, remove metal and all that stuff. And here again, join them, get a little puddle on each corner and then join them together and then a few more dabs and then let them cool for a minute. Not a minute, but you know, maybe maybe a little bit less than a minute and then fire up on it and weld that one out. And this one's got, I should have clean. I should have deburred it. That's another thing. I kind of got in a hurry because I'm kind of, to be, I'm kind of a little bit over this project and ready to, ready to move on. And I think this is going to do it. I think this is going to be the final thing that makes it fit just fine for the girl. But I do want it to look decent after it's painted and everything and, you know, not look like a cobbled up hack job. Jobs like this, when you have to start modifying them, they can go south quick. So this is what it looked like before with the first stab, and this is what it looked like after the revision one. I actually had to shorten the uh, the gussets as well to get enough to get the seat height right, but good to go now. And it it is just like the spin bike, and so she's happy. Got a big job coming up, big steel job, lifting devices for some heavy stuff. If you like what you saw. Uh, feel free to comment, hit the thumbs up button or whatever, and if you saw me using the TIG finger and you think that would help you out, this is where you can get it, weldmongerstore.com. Thanks.